and welcome everyone to the E4M talk show. We have today with us Paul Segalov, who has the sales business of Yahoo across the APAC region, and he's based in Australia. Welcome to the show, Mr. Segalov. Hello, Kanchan. It's wonderful to be here, and thank you so much for your time. How are you doing? I think you have the first snowfall of the season today. Absolutely. You can tell I've been in this very cold room for a while, so excuse the jacket, um, but I've been sedentary, and it's definitely winter is upon us here. Uh, in Sydney, but it's it's sunny and crisp and cold. Okay, we have thirty to thirty five degrees centigrade in Mumbai wow. at present. <laughs> wow, a little bit different. Uh-huh. And and apart from you know, you have a new government also in in Australia that is installed recently. So uh, the my first question would be: Are you expecting any major changes in the media policy now since you have a new government? And also, I would like to know from you about your plans and strategy, and maybe overview of you know your policy about Yahoo. Yeah, look uh, about Yahoo. Look, I think um, firstly let's let's go macro. Um, look, I think there's a lot of uh, great opportunity with a new government. Um, it's too soon to say if there's going to be. Um, any kind of major changes uh, coming through, but I think it's an interesting time for everybody as we start to look at privacy and compliance. And there's obviously quite a lot of scrutiny about some of the kind of larger media businesses that have taken um, a lot of revenue out of the traditional um, media businesses. So I think that that will probably continue. Um, but yes, I think it's a little too too soon to tell exactly uh, how it's going to all play out at the moment. And, and, and I would like you to, you know, elaborate on your own strategy for Yahoo Business. You know, since you have taken over as APSC head. Yeah. Um, look, I think it's a very exciting time um, to to be here in our business. Um, you know, Yahoo or the new Yahoo, as we call it, is really in a transformational place. Um, with Apollo recently acquiring Yahoo, we really have the backing uh, for what we need to take Yahoo to the next level. So. Yahoo has a really impressive range of assets. We've got those premium iconic brands. We've got our industry leading ad tech. And all of that is fueled by kind of billions of data points to really help drive that better audience personalization for our consumers and uh, move to meaningful um, engagement. So we're really focused on driving, I suppose, our value creation through these big iconic brands and our ad tech. And we're seeing some pretty phenomenal growth uh, across the board. And when we look at our DSP, our demand side platform, both globally and in India, uh, we're seeing some pretty um, amazing growth. Let me quantify that. Um, You know, across India, uh, we're seeing about 130% growth on our DSP, um, which is amazing versus 115% um, KGAR. And globally, we're seeing about 185% growth. So, Um, That's absolutely been um, a strong driver of growth. Um, And our key growth drivers in India also include things like our native products, our DSP and our exchange as well. Um, And, you know, we have a lot of um, global partners, but we also have a lot of local partners um, in India on the exchange side of the business as well. So we have a lot of direct premium publishers um, and they're well-renowned names like Times of India or Daily Hunt or Z5 or Microsoft. So advertisers can really reach, you know, that um, great engaged Indian online population at scale um, through our full stack as well. And, you know, we have reported strong um, diversified year over year revenue growth in 2021. And a lot of that has come from our high performing um, sort of consumer engagement experiences. When you look at the mega trends, e-commerce is a really exciting experience. Uh, And really, when we think about focus areas, um, it's about continuing to double down on our strong partnerships across our um, media ecosystem. So examples of that uh, across the APAC region would be things like NIR, um, which is a great data partner, and that helps with kind of closed loop attribution. Again, we had a very recent um, uh, press release and announcement, I think it was last week with Hivestack. So that's all about embracing digital out of home as a a growing and emerging trend and and accessing um, inventory there. And then obviously there's a whole piece on identity. So obviously as we kind of move towards this cookie-less and ID-less world, how do we help those advertisers navigate um, towards that? So uh, 
look, a lot's happening, um, but it's a very exciting time uh, for Yahoo. Very impressive growth indeed. Uh, so now a natural question. I mean, Yahoo had shut down its news operations in India, uh, you know, last year. Uh, so do you have any plans to restart the domain now? Look, I just want to acknowledge that Yahoo India was obviously impacted by the change to the regulatory laws. And, you know, that wasn't a decision that we came to lightly, um, given our 20 year association with all of those users in India. Um, we still have, you know, great products through our mail, um, which incidentally is the second largest email service in India. Um, and also we have Yahoo Search as well, and that continues to operate in India. Um, and that also represents a sizable audience. Um, in addition, we've got our growing advertising business. So we're well placed to pursue strong opportunities in India. And, you know, key drivers, as I, I touched on, were our DSP, but also our native business uh, as well. And really, the advertising business in India has been a strong contributor to our global growth story. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, DSP has been kind of pivotal to that. But I think we're always looking for opportunities um, that are in line with our global strategy and our company goals. And that's really about how we benefit our business. And India is a strategically important market. So we're obviously going to continue to assess the situation. We're going to look at the landscape in India and really continue to engage with the Indian government and other stakeholders uh, to understand um, future opportunities there. That means a new section is unlikely to be started very soon, right? Um, at this moment, yeah, there's no announcements for me to, 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 okay. to talk about today. Okay, okay. So what, what are your biggest challenges at present, you know, considering the increasing size of Google, Amazon, Meta? Oh, well, you know, they are some pretty um, big competitors, but the way I like to look at it is um, really when you look at Yahoo's scale and our global reach, it's actually pretty similar to that of Facebook and Google um, with our global products and services reaching almost 900 million people. Um, however, we do operate very much like an independent player. So we're way more collaborative. Um, we don't have a, a, a walled garden approach. And it's really about putting our consumers and our partners first. So Yahoo's seen considerable change and, you know, that's kind of well expected, I suppose, as we're one of the founding companies of the Internet. And we've experienced a lot of learnings um, along the way. But as I said earlier, the new era of Yahoo is really focused on driving that value creation uh, through our global brands and our ad tech um, solutions and our search business. And we have deep product experience. We've got tremendous industry knowledge that will drive new, opportunity, new opportunities and also have um, some great investment across the globe. So really with, the back, with um, Apollo coming on board and backing us, what we are is we're free from the public uh, market. So we can build on our strong momentum and we have the runway to take Yahoo to the next level. So personally, I'm really excited about our future. For me, I feel like the stars have aligned. It's a moment in time where we ha really have the ability to unlock that full potential. We've also got our iconic brands. We've got our omni-channel full stack. And outside of our owned and operated content, we've got those um, kind of deep global partnerships that we have with the likes of Apple and Microsoft and Fox. Um, but most importantly, I always talk about people. And people really are the lifeblood of our business. And we have an amazing team. Um, certainly in India, a hugely talented team. We have, you know, that great asset, um, asset base and we have incredible business momentum. And really, you know, it's those proof points I, I touched on earlier. You know, we're already seeing tremendous momentum. And so it's how do we continue to drive that? And the way that we kind of look at it is we're building this rich ecosystem and that's about creating sustainable value. But we want to do that for our businesses um, that we partner with, we want to do it with our advertisers, and just to make sure that sort of it's a mutually um, beneficial um, space for us to play in. How do you plan to scale up uh, Yahoo's uh, creative studios and and Metaverse uh, domain? Oh, are you wow. planning to Are you planning to produce branded content as well? Look, I think you know um, the Metaverse is really really interesting and. Um, um, it really speaks to that larger trend. Uh, for me, it's about, you know, the demand for immersive, personalized experiences. And 
you know, we were quite an early mo uh, an early mover on the AR and VR um, space. So when I think about AR ads, you know, it's really built to make messages resonate um, and it's more appealing to consumers. And we found that brands that adopt those new mediums and technologies, such as the metaverse, will more effectively engage and convert um, some of their target audiences. When I think about shopping and I think about AR and AI, it's really about how do we create long lasting impressions? So how can you keep your brand top of mind for future shopping needs? And also when we look at AR, um, Yahoo Studios has found that 46% of shoppers are really interested in this AR content. We're seeing that 80% of people want this kind of 360 degree view of the product. Um, obviously a lot more people are doing e -com, but it's really seeing and having that interactive experience before they buy. We're also seeing that over 60% are more likely to pay attention to products when they're presented in an innovative way. And as you know, there's a big fight for attention out there. But when I think about the metaverse, for me, the metaverse is all about experiences. So for me, that's about how do we bridge the gap between our physical and our virtual worlds? And brands are really interested to learn more as they explore in this space. Um, interestingly, millions of consumers are already playing in this space. And when you think about how people learn, um, when you read, you retain about 10% of information. When you hear, you retain about 20%. When you see, it's about 30%. But when you experience, a lot of people can retain up to 90%. So there was a really interesting case study um, around the metaverse that we did with um, a, liquor, a liquor product called Monkey Shoulder, which was a whiskey product. Uh, and that was over in the UK. And it was something that came to, to, to light and we showcased it last week in our APAC Growth Summit. But interestingly, um, they had a great relationship through experiences and music. And so they used to set up these events and, you know, um, people would attend the events in real life and their product would be there. Then obviously the pandemic came and there weren't really many in real life events. But what they recognized was there were millions of people in the metaverse. So um, with the help of Yahoo, they create, recreated um, an experience in um, Decentraland. They had volumetric capture of DJs that they selected and they created this virtual event, which proved to be really, really popular. Um, again, people could still experience and interact with their products. Um, but it was a great way for them to do that in a new and innovative way. And I think that for me was kind of a great example of how when you have sort of the traditional um, marketing approach, but then you embrace um, the way that new consumers are, are engaging and how do you pull that through. And that was a great test and learn environment um, that worked really, really well and paid off um, for them. And there's loads of other opportunities as well and examples. So people that like to shop digi um, digitally are here. And again, the metaverse uh, will be a really interesting playground for that. So again, another example was in New York where Yahoo um, was an innovation partner at New York Fashion Week. And we collaborated with a popular designer um, called Maisie Whelan on a holographic experience. And the holograms would appear as virtual models and um, that would come to life where people would interact and play with them. And then consumers could experience the collection through 3D assets that were available through QR codes and they could share it with friends. Uh, uh, using kind of web AR as well. And I think, you know, this is kind of really um, exciting and interesting um, for people. And then bringing it back to, to India and home, I think when um, what this means is that viewers from anywhere in the world can now be a part of an event or an experience. They just need a mobile phone to engage and explore. And as you well know, Indians absolutely love smartphones. So, you know, I think we're well placed to, to capitalize on the trend here. What is the mandate of uh, your creative studio? Um, I wouldn't necessarily, there's kind of a, a clear mandate, um, but it, it's certainly around understanding, you know, um, clients' challenges, recognizing those, those global consumer megatrends and leaning in and being a pioneer and an innovator. So again, it's not about, owning a chunk of the metaverse. It's actually about the democratization of the metaverse and saying, well, who's doing really interesting things in this space? What can we do to, to work with them, to collaborate, to partner? 
And also, um, we have a great relationship and deep relationships with many brands. And so a lot of them come to us for knowledge and education. Uh, and we do a lot of test and learn in this place, in the space. So I think it's really exciting um, that, that, you know, we're, we're kind of exploring and identifying a lot of new opportunities here. I would like to know from you, what are the current, current trends in the ad technology market? And uh, you, you already mentioned a couple of brands which, uh, with which you are working. But I would also like to know the categories of brand which are largely advertising with Yahoo India. Okay, got lots there. So let me just unpack that for you. Mm -hmm. um, so when we think about um, brands uh, in India, and, you know, I'm fortunate enough to talk to many of them, um, the theme of omni-channel seems to be standing out. So again, if you're not familiar with omni-channel, it's how to connect with consumers across the digital ecosystem in a seamless way. And this really goes beyond display and video and native um, and now, basically, we like to include channels like connected TV and digital out of home. So the trend that I'm noticing is how can ad tech really drive greater performance and efficiency? And there's that old adage of 50% of my advertising is working, but I don't know which half is. But now through uh, the Yahoo DSP, you absolutely can. Um, so when we look at connected TV, firstly, viewing in India is rising fast with smart connected TVs um, ex reported to exceed sort of 40 million by 2025, according, by, uh, according to EY. And then you've got um, CTV um, inventory as a result of that um, is becoming available programmatically. And that's really attracting more linear spend. So as a result, we're seeing that CTV will be a big driver for India, and we're already seeing um, growing interest from advertisers. Changing gear a bit and looking at digital out of home, um, we're seeing that there's obviously a bit of a resurgence with Indian cities that are now opening up. And we're seeing that the growing availability of digital out of home inventory through programmatic channels is really making it easier for advertisers to buy. And I think this is interesting because it actually is attracting new demand. Um, it's not just taking existing demand, um, um, but really most importantly, uh, digital out of home has been proven to drive sales. So we did a research project and basically that showed that digital out of home ads really nudge shoppers towards that impulsing purchases, which is guilty. Well, I'm sure we're all, we've all been guilty of that. But what we're seeing is that 56% have reported that they purchased an item that's been featured in a digital out of home display ad. And 65% of these purchases were unplanned. So really that's been triggered after a customer has seen the ad. And then finally, when we look at as cookies go away and, and brands are preparing for a cookie-less and an ID-less world, there are numerous solutions out there. And really um, Yahoo's doing a lot of work in our Connect ID and our next gen solution space. So I don't know if you want me to dive into that now um, because uh, there's, a, there's a lot I can kind of um, expand on. Or um, I'm also happy to kind of talk about the kinds of advertisers that we're seeing in India. So maybe I'll take that one first. So um, when we look at the different categories, um, really we work with a diverse group of clients. And that could be anything from FMCG brands to automotive to banking and finance. And what we're seeing is that some of our advertisers um, would, for example, would include people like Amazon, or Abbott, or Mahindra Automobile, uh, autom Automotive, so Renault, Mercedes um, would be some good examples, or ICICI Direct would be like another great example of that. Um, and then in addition, what we have is a strong network with our advertising agencies, our agency trading desks, so people like Canesso, OMG, Madison, Amnet, and Socrati, you know, we have really deep relationships with um with those partners as well. And, and again, going on the journey with them in terms of trying to help them solve their clients' business objectives, which is um, super important. How do you plan to strengthen your, uh, your you know, core abilities like search, email, right? Yeah, look, those products are always on and they're permanently being um, invested in. So interestingly, if you go to the iOS or the Play Store and you were to look at Yahoo Mail, 
um, versus other providers, you'll find that we're kind of one of the highest ranked in in the mail stores. So I think it's a it's a continual sort of um, relentless focus on the consumer, really trying to understand um, what requirements they need um, based on changing consumer trends. Obviously, e-commerce is growing. So how do you have, um, you know, a really kind of organized inbox uh, based around a lot, a lot of emails people get and breaking up kind of the social media emails to the, to the work emails to the e-commerce emails would be kind of an example of, of things that we're doing. Um, but something for me that, you know, uh, we've put a lot of time and energy and focus on is, is basically the cookie world and, and how do we protect consumers um, with privacy? And, and really, phil philosophically at Yahoo, it's about putting trust and control back in the hands of our consumers and our advertisers. And as one of the founding companies of the internet, um, Yahoo has intimate knowledge of the digital landscape, and we're uniquely positioned to really understand our partners' needs as we enter a cookie-less world. And one of the reasons we can solve for this is because we've got millions of global direct consumers, um, and we've got great relationships with them, and we have a lot of first-party data. But before I go into that, it's really important that we understand the problem that, so we can really understand what we're solving for. So what I want to do is kind of chunk that down. And when you think about the old world, and I'm a really visual person, but if you visualize a pie chart, um, identity was really fueled by 50% cookies and 50% device IDs that powered your targeting solutions. Now, when you look in current reality, it's more like 35% cookies, 35% device IDs, and, uh, and approximately... 30% of all ad impressions are being delivered to unknown users because in browsers like Safari, um, you've got these cookie blockers. So fast forward to the new world. So how do you piece together identity without cookies or device IDs? So knowing all of these changes were coming, Yahoo has been focused on building a solution ahead of time. And the way that we kind of deliver on this is through a multi-pronged approach. And that is, how do we get this full identity picture in a cookie-less world? So what I want to do really quickly is kind of rebuild that pie chart. So if you think of an empty pie chart, 30% of the pie chart is going to be powered by what we call our Connect ID solution. So Yahoo Connect ID solves for when an ID is present. And our identity graph brings together a significant amount of opt-in data that is first party, second party, and third party data signals to build those comprehensive user profiles. Secondly, you have our next generation solutions. So that makes up about 45% of the pie chart. And Yahoo's next gen solution solves for when an ID is not available. So what we do here is we leverage Yahoo's data, our machine learning, and we look at those real time signals to infer audience characteristics, but we do that in a privacy preserving manner. We then look at our data partnerships. So um, as I mentioned earlier, NIR would be a great example of that. So where we've got data partnerships that complement first party data. <coughs> Pardon me. And really what we're trying to do is provide a more holistic view. So again, there's partners like Nielsen or Experian or Adobe or Blue Kai. Um, that would help with um, piecing together that. Then you've got about 5%, which is about enhanced attribution. So that's really about improving measurement of click-through rates in a world where cookies are blocked. So that's how you have basically a dot pixel on a site or in a tag manager that can be tracked um, on iOS using Apple's new transparency framework. And then the last little 5% of your pie chart is really room for new innovation, new partnerships, new learnings. And so that's really how we've tried to reconstruct, um, you know, for a cookie-less world. And the great news is it's absolutely working, uh, Kanshan. What we're seeing is that globally we've had over 11,000 publishers and domains like BuzzFeed and Shopify and Newsweek that have already adopted Connect ID. And we've got over 3,000 advertisers that have already started to activate first party data. So that's huge. And it means that when you know the decision 
um, to sort of extend the, the current operandi and the, 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 the current way of operating um, was here. It's actually just given us more time to build the muscle memory and get organized for the future. So we're in a really, really good position there. Very interesting, I guess. Uh, so my last question, the digital marketing space is evolving very fast in India. How it is, Indian market is different from the other APAC markets? Oh, well, look, I think there's similarities and there's, and there's differences. So I think, you know, interestingly for um, Yahoo, why, why we're um, really well positioned within that is that with our global structure, we're really solving clients' business objectives in a, in a global holistic way. And what we're finding is that uh, I talk about global scale, but local autonomy. And a lot of the smarts that I've talked about are evolved and created with global rollout in mind. And, and that has been incredibly beneficial um, for India because what, what we can do is leverage on all of this expertise and learnings from across the globe. But where we have um, great competitive advantage is that we then go, well, what makes sense locally in India, given the, the market dynamics, um, the market maturity, uh, again, talking to a lot of advertisers around what's important to them and understanding how through our, our suite of products, um, what's going to work best within the Indian market. So really, you know, the talented team on the ground in India um, are excellent uh, just synthesizing you know, all of the all of the trends that are happening and then saying, well, actually, we feel that now they can roll out those things to really continue to deliver on those solutions. And I have to say, given the momentum that that team had, um, when I look back at full year 2021, the India business grew um, in excess of 40 percent year over year. So, you know, really, they've done a tremendous job at, at, at leveraging the capabilities that we have across our global business and and making sure that that resonates globally. Um, across the Indian market. Thanks for taking time out and talking with us, Mr. Sigalov. Thank you very much and happy windows. Thank you, Kanshan. Thank you very much for your time and uh, it was great talking. Same here. Thank you.